Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Innovators Radio. I am your host, Ralph Brogdon, and today I am speaking with Barbara Wilder. Her passion is to bring light into the dark corners of our hearts and minds to help shift human consciousness up into the vibration of universal love. She has been speaking to this purpose internationally for over 20 years. In her groundbreaking book, Money is Love, which is considered one of the foundational works of the sacred economics movement. She showed us how to reconnect money to the sacred and transform it into an agent for personal and global prosperity. Her forthcoming book, Creating a Sacred Marketplace, is a bridge into the new love-based economy. Her books, workshops, meditations, and coaching practice has helped thousands realize their dreams. And I'm so delighted to have you on today's program. Barbara, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Ralph. And you're joining us from L.A., as a matter of fact. That's right. A beautiful spring day in L.A. Beautiful. So um, I... I, I kind of get the gist of, of what you're all about, but tell us a little bit more about who you are and, and what specifically you do. Well, um, 25 years ago, I was like, I, I think it was almost 25 years ago, a long time ago, 23 years ago, I was um, introduced to this kind of irrational thought that money is love. And um, I've been kind of following that and uh, wrote, writing about it and teaching about it and uh, ever since. Uh, and it's not something I um, I really chose. It was it just came to it into my life after I had um, been living uh, having the worst year of my life with my mother dying and cutting me out of the will and um, going bankrupt. Mm. So. Mm. <laughs> so so, as you can imagine, when when this there, I was living in Boulder, Colorado at the time, and I was invited to um, to to a birthday party for this eighty year old man from England who is known as the Godfather of crop circles, huh. and I think crop circles are very exciting. <laughs> so, I went to this, so I went to the party, and we were late, uh, and, and so I stood in the back because he was, it, it was in a, somebody's home, but he was standing on the hearth giving a, a little talk about crop circles, and uh, all of a sudden, after I'd been there just for a few moments, he looked at me, and then he stopped talking, and he said, money is love. I just have to tell you that money is love, and then... He went right back to talking about crop circles. Interesting. Now, when you first heard that, what what did that mean to you? What? How did you react to that? Well, it was amazing because it was like that message went. It didn't. It went into my heart. It didn't go into my brain. Mm. My brain said, "My heart is like going. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true." And my brain is saying, "Don't be an idiot. You're bankrupt. You're disinherited." <laughs> 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 but I kept feeling this immense sense that this was a real truth. It was something. And so I went up to him after his little talk and I asked him what it meant. And he said, I don't really know. Uh. <laughs> he said, the people, some people I know in Scotland are talking about it. And last night, just before I went to sleep, I saw this like, pink ball of light in front of my face and I heard the words money is love and when you came in there was a pink ball in front of your face and I just had to say it Hmm. so what does that mean money is love it it almost sounds like a contradiction how do you describe it for people (laughs) well yes it is you know in our in our culture it's a complete contradiction Mm -hmm. you know money and love we keep in completely separate columns you know, money can't buy you love, you know, um, uh, money is the root of all evil. Yeah, love is all you need. <laughs> <laughs> and love is all you need. <laughs> right? and so those two things don't come together. And I so I spent a long time, you know, well, first of all, I spent a long time just doing solid research on money, 
the history of money, where it comes from, everything. But what I learned was that before history, in prehistory, before we moved into what um, Rhea Isla calls it, the dominator culture that we've been living in for the past about 5,000 years, money and how we shared everything with each other was completely connected to our connection with the Divine Mother Earth. Mm. And that everything we got came from the Earth we celebrated the earth. We did ceremony with her and everything that we, sh- that we shared and bartered and traded was part of her, a part of the earth and here to support all of us. Interesting. And, yeah. So, so how does that work for today? Because we're not, we, we, we're in the age of modernism and technology, and, and we were talking off air about how this technology brings people together. But I also think it gets us away from nature and, and away from, from these, uh, I guess, deeply rooted uh, things that other people felt a connection to. And that seems lost in, in the modern era. So how do we take that and apply it? Money is love. What does that mean for us today in the in the hustle and bustle of our world? Well, we're in the, it. That's a great question. I mean, and because and and what what I've been got what I've been taught over these years because this you know was a, a definitely a, a learning curve for me mm-hmm. um, is that we have it's it's time for us to move out of this dominators era into a partnership era mm. and as and and we are in the process of actually doing that we're actually it with as like the dominator era is like fighting for its life right now and uh, that's what we're seeing in the in the shadow st- stuff that's going on now and, and is the, that like the like the zero sum game that in order for me to win someone else has to lose exactly okay. <laughs> exactly Exactly. And what I, one of the things I learned as I was doing my research was in the Talmud, which is the ancient Jewish text, it's, there's a line that says, true wealth is abundance that does not create scarcity. Hmm. True wealth is abundance that does not create scarcity. And we live in the opposite of that. Yes. And, And so, so that, you know, we have 3.5 billion people living under the, in, in extreme poverty out of our 7.3 billion people on the planet. Mm-hmm. And well, and this is, that's a literal fact. <laughs> yeah. And we also literally, there are 62 people, 62 individual human beings that own as much of the wealth as 3.5 billion of us. Interesting. <laughs> and so it's time to shift that. Because that doesn't make any sense. But it, we came upon this as we moved into, in, into this time of individuation, as I think like to think of it, as we moved out of the tribal ego consciousness into individuated egos and um, began um, having uh, not tribal councils, but, you know, leaders and people that had to have more than others so that they could prove that they were better than mm-hmm. that we've been doing mm-hmm. 5,000 years. Um, and we, and we, we're now need to shift that because that is taking us to the brink. And to, to, to be at that brink is, uh, is a is a moment when we have to stop and look at what that means and open our hearts to this new era where the truth is because we have been living this in this collective belief for this 5000 years that there's not enough to go around we uh, there is you know that the 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 amount of money the amount of wealth the amount of however you want to talk about the resources that are on the planet are limited mm-hmm. and we have to fight to get our piece of that limited pie and to, and whoever doesn't get theirs be damned mm-hmm. and so as we move into this new era <laughs> as which we're, we're in, in really on the brink of doing we're moving from 
a me culture, kind of easily, easily to think about, to a we culture. Mm-hmm. From, a, from an economy based on fear to an economy based on love of our fellow humans. Very good. And now you've been speaking and writing towards this purpose for over 20 years. Your, your books, workshops, meditations, you have a coaching practice. Um, what is the most common problem you see when you're helping people trying to make this shift from the scarcity mentality to the mentality from me to we? What's the biggest hangup that you see when, when you're working with people trying to make that shift? It, 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 and it's, it's, it's just um, across the board. Fear. Hmm. Everybody is afraid to take. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big new step to let go of living in a culture that's based on fear. Into a, Because that's our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. That's where we feel really comfortable in this in this strange way that to living in this in living in like a constant sense of anxiety, a constant feeling of anxiety. Our whole our whole everybody does that <laughs> mm-hmm. because that's so. So to get in. So I work, you know, because I work with energy. I work with healing. With, I'm, I'm also a, a a spiritual teacher and I work with meditation, working with light energy and I work on helping heal the nervous system because that's where we we're stuck. The nervous system lives and that's what we're all in such stress all the time. I mean, the, the stress, our adrenal glands are constantly working, you know, adrenal glands are only supposed to, you know, come into you know, use when we're being attacked by a tiger. Uh (laughs) (laughs) But I guess it kind of feels that way when you are in the scarcity mentality and the zero sum game of life. Uh, Mm -hmm. It kind of feels like you're in the, in the jungle. We even call it the law of the jungle. And that's kind of how we accept reality. Exactly. Yeah. And we just accept that reality, you see? And that's, and so that's what, what I come up against all the time is, is, is people, you know, having to break free of this false belief system and open to this new belief system that's about flow. It's, a, it's, not, it's about letting go of holding on so tightly to what's yours. Mm. And, and let and, and kind of learning this very very radical th- thing that money truly just flows through the world, and it and, and when we open up to that, it flows through our lives and it can it flows through our businesses and our businesses thrive and we thrive in that consciousness. But to, but it's that shift, and it's and it really. The shift I've I've really learned it very recently has got to have be in the healing of our nervous systems. Mm. What what is something that someone just listening to this maybe something they could do right now to begin to see some immediate improvement? And it, it's I, I get the sense it's going to take a while to really grasp this because it's it is so uh, against how we are conditioned. But is there something? that someone can do right now just to begin to kind of move in this direction of the sacred economy? Well, one of the simple things is to, um, and we don't use checks so much anymore. I used to say checks, but but still we do sometimes write checks, but like write money is love, like on the bottom of your credit card slip or write money is love on a check or, or, or write it on, you know, type it in when you're, when you're buying something online and just kind of let this, this strange little combination of words start to shift in your brain. Because what I think, what, what, what this, this sentence, money is love, is sort of like an alchemical shift that happens when you put them all in. Mm. You know, when in alchemy, you put two different things or different things into a beaker and they transform each other. Mm-hmm. And so I think of this sentence, money is love, is like an alchemical beaker. 
And when you continually kind of have it as a mantra and keep saying it, it sort the, the love starts kind of transforming the money and the money starts transforming the love in that sentence. And that actually begins to shift our brains and the way we think. Mm. Give, I wonder if you could give us an example of, of, say, someone you have worked with that or maybe a business that has made this shift. And, and what would it look like? How would they see their customers differently? How would they see their products and services differently if, if they were to begin looking at it from the money is love philosophy? Well, it's it's really exciting <laughs> because well, first of all, we can talk about the triple bottom line. Um, and I'm are you familiar with the triple bottom line? Um, I, I have heard versions of it. What's yours? So, well, so the triple bottom line that that many many companies are using now is, um, or I call the three P's is people, planet, and profit. Hmm. So that they, they become equal. They become equal in your business. So your the people are your clients to your customers and your staff and, and, and the people and the planet, of course, is the ecology and the environment. And then the profit is profit. Mm -hmm. But when you bring those into like balance in your business, what happens is that you're you're paying you 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 stop being so single minded about that profit, mm -hmm. and then you open up to to this the, the and of course this is speaking again to what we talked about in the beginning connecting with the earth, right? Mm -hmm. We can then we bring in oh protecting the earth into our business consciousness, into our, our businesses and our daily practice, that's reconnecting us to that immense, you know, abundance that the earth holds for us. And then when you start treating your people like they're like, like you, you care about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like assets instead of liabilities. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. All of a sudden, this dance starts to happen, and flow begins to happen, and people start opening up and feeling comfortable at work. And then when they feel comfortable and happy at work, they are more productive. When they feel happy about being helping the planet, they're more productive. And when your customers and clients come into that into that environment, they feel better. Mm -hmm. And want to contribute and they want to be part of and they want to bring their money to to your company and and so you, you're coming so and a dance starts to happen a flow begins to happen that sounds really you know? exciting and it, it sounds a lot better than the than the typical corporate mindset I, and but I, I think in the last 100 years possibly we have seen things shift when when it began I'm thinking back to the earlier 20th century with Henry Ford, it was all about profit and, and people suffered in, the, in that environment. Yeah. Uh, and then we learned, okay, well, people are important. Uh, it's not just about the money. It's about making people and uh, trying to pay attention to our stakeholders. And so th that we started to make some progress in that area. And then we realized, hey, we've got to be responsible back to the earth back we've got to be environmentally responsible as well and and so the bringing those three together into a triple bottom line really helps to focus uh, organizations and and corporations um, as well as I think individual practitioners coaches and consultants and and people who think well you know it's just me here and doing doing this little thing I'm not a big corporation what can I do but I think what you're saying is it all begins with that mindset and, and shifting um, of looking at your work and your business as as relational more so than just how can I make a quick buck? Exactly. Exactly. And and you're right. It, it, we have been progressing to this, you see, and that's what's so exciting. That mm -hmm. That's why actually here, you know, at, at, a, at this moment in time when we're about to make one of those quantum leaps that humanity makes mm. once in a while. 
Um, but one of the it, what I bring in in my new book, Creating a Sacred Marketplace, is there's a fourth bottom line. And the fourth bottom, and that's the main bottom line. And that is the, um, is love. You see, if you bring it, cause when, cause I've watched some businesses that work with the triple bottom line, but it gets very people, it's all, it's all in everybody's head and they're trying to make it work. I see. So <laughs> it's, it's for, for their, uh, see if this is right. If, if there's passion in those three things and it'll work. And, and that's, that's the, the fourth P passion right. or love. If it's just right. cerebral or, you know, here's our new company policy, it's not going to be sustainable, is it? Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> you, got it. you got it right on the nose. Very. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when we bring in the understanding, the money, then we add this thing that money is love that is supposed to, you see, because Whatever we bring love into expands. That's just an en- the energy of love is an expansive energy, and the energy of fear is is a contracting energy. So when we when we think about money actually shifting into like an energy of love to share and grow and expand through the, the planet. Then we, and we bring that consciousness into our bottom line consciousness of love into our triple bottom line. Then it, everything just can, can expand, has the potential to expand exponentially mm. Mm. so that there is more and more and more abundance in the whole world. Excellent. I've, I've been speaking with Barbara Wilder. She is author of the book Money is Love. She's got another book coming out called Creating a Sacred Marketplace. Um, Barbara, what else are you working on right now that's got you really excited? Well, I, I, I'm teaching these online classes right now. Money, uh, uh, there's a series. Um, the first one is called Money is Love, the New Prosperity, which is a six week interactive online class. And I have, uh, uh, three groups going right now or two groups going right now and starting a new one uh, that begins, um, uh, very, uh, in about three weeks from this date. Um, and, um, and I'm also, uh, you know, really, you know, getting very excited about working with businesses and bringing this consciousness into, you know, going into businesses and sitting with the people and, and chatting and, and bringing this new awareness into, you know, my coaching, my coaching, my coaching with businesses and with, uh, Per, with you know individual people um so i'm just i feel like you know i've been doing all this work for all this time on this on with with this and it's finally coming to fruition mm-hmm. it's time for you know because when i first started this people were just going this woman's crazy <laughs> But yeah, so I'm very excited about the, my new clients that are, um, and I'm, I'm looking to, to expand more and get more clients in, uh, in businesses, uh, so we can bring this, this exciting new work in on this energy. Excellent. So, and, and very innovative and, and so very appropriate for business innovators like yourself. Um, how, how can our listeners get in touch with you to find out more? They just go to my, um, website www.barbarawilder.com barbarawilder.com awesome any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to share with us it's been very good by the way and very something i think we're going to have to really think about but intuitively i think it it makes sense uh what we're doing now isn't working so you know let's try (laughs) let's try this approach money is love um but any final thoughts or or words of wisdom that you you want to leave us with well you know one thing that i ask um my clients and i tweet this a lot is what if you woke up every morning and knew that you had more than enough and so did everybody else And just kind of think about that. And then I love what, um, you know, Einstein said, what we can imagine, we can create. 
So if we think about that, you know, what if you woke up every morning and had more than enough and so did everybody else and just start to imagine what that would feel like? We can create that. Awesome. Words of wisdom from Barbara Wilder. She's a speaker, a teacher, and author of the book, Money is Love. Barbara, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure, Ralph. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.